up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2022 nissan leaf courtesy of younger nissan in frederick maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i'm in this one today because this is the most inexpensive electric vehicle here in the U.S. at least. I don't know where you guys are watching this from, but here in the U.S., this is the most inexpensive. You actually get up to a $7,500 tax credit as well. And essentially the way that works is if you owe $7,500 in taxes at the end of the year, this completely negates that. So therefore, nothing is going to happen. You don't owe anything. You don't get anything back. But if you owe $5,000 at the end of the year, it's only going to apply $5,000 towards that tax credit. So they're not going to cut you a check for the difference. I just wanted to emphasize that for anybody curious about that tax credit question. But anyway, and of course, with this being an all electric vehicle, you don't have to worry about paying gas prices anymore either. So in this video, we'll be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering from ride quality, sound system, rear leg room, all that fun stuff. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several trim levels for the 2022 LEAF. First one being the S starting at $27,400. SV for $28,800. S Plus, which actually is the one we are in today, starting at $32,400. SV Plus for $35,400. And lastly, the SL Plus starting at $37,400. And of course, if you wanted to, you can also subtract $7,500 from any of those prices for the federal tax credit, at least if you're here in the US. But to go along with all of those trim levels, there's actually two different power configurations. First, you have the 40 kilowatt lithium ion battery. That one is going to come with the nine plus trim levels that puts out 147 horsepower 236 pound-feet of torque sent to the front wheel 0 to 60 coming in at approximately 7.4 seconds that one is going to give you 149 miles of range in case you were curious about that but overall that one is going to charge from 0 to 80 percent in approximately one ish hours but so then you have the other setup which is going to come with the plus trim levels like we have today that one is a 62 kilowatt lithium ion battery that one puts out 214 horsepower 250 pound-feet of torque again sent to the front wheel zero to 60 time for this one comes in at approximately 6.5 seconds so we're going to be testing that acceleration here in a little bit but the range for this setup is going to be 215 miles if you were to go with the sv plus or sl plus and then 226 miles if you were to go with the s plus that we have today so we have the very longest range configuration of all of the leafs out there which is pretty cool but anyways now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the leaf here to the test and let's see how quickly it is going to cut through the leaves for us here all right you guys from a standstill in three two one yeah that's not bad man that is not bad honestly it kind of surprised me Zero to 60 in 6.5 seconds is pretty respectable, I'll say that, but you gotta love electric cars with that instant torque. I love that acceleration. It's definitely gonna be plenty enough to merge you onto the highway. But so anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so, of course, you will find four-wheel ventilated disc brakes coming standard on the Leaf. As far as that 60-0 stopping distance goes, comes in at a very respectable 121 feet. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Having said that, as far as the braking feel goes, it does give you that electric car braking feel so it's definitely on the softer side of things it's not a firm braking feel by any means it feels like pretty much every other electric car that i have driven and i did want to also mention there is an e-pedal button located just in front of the shifter and so that's going to give you that one pedal driving mode essentially so if i were to let off the gas it's immediately going to slow down for me all the way coming to a stop as well not all electric cars do that but I do love the one pedal driving mode. If you don't, all you need to do is just simply hit that button again and it's gonna turn it off for you. But I love that it's there personally. It's an electric car thing and it also saves you on the brake pads, of course, as well, which is a good thing. But so the touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension in the back torsion beam rear axle, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine in my short test drive here today. There's definitely no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it's definitely one of the loosest steering feels I've tested in quite a while, if I'm being honest. 
definitely loosey-goosey wouldn't have minded if they firmed that up a little bit but it's kind of the exact opposite of a sports car steering feel it's more like an suv steering feel if i were to kind of compare it to anything i guess and as far as cab noise goes i'm going 30 ish miles per hour right now there isn't a whole lot of wind noise or exterior road noise coming into the cabin whatsoever so definitely no issues with that and then touching on visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back 100 not going to have any issues there but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Nissan Leaf. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2022 Nissan Leaf finished in deep blue pearl. I actually love the color on this particular leaf. It looks really good. There was another one that's on the lot that's silver, but this blue one looks dang good but anyways let's go ahead and start up front because this is a very unique front end for the leaf no front grille needed of course because this is an electric car but look what they replaced it with it looks so much like there's 3d triangles found within that front grille hopefully you guys are able to see that but it looks so dang cool up front you almost have to get up close and the sun has to hit it in order for you to see that but it looks pretty darn good i like that little design there charging port is going to be located in the front here there's actually a button by the driver's side lift knee essentially just press that button and that's going to open up for you then so that's pretty cool as far as the lighting goes halogen headlights coming with the s s v and s plus trim levels automatic feature coming with those headlights of course meaning when it starts to get dark and at night those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you then fog lights are going to come on the sv trims and the sl trim level and then led headlights coming with the sv plus and sl plus trims and that is going to include led signature daytime running lights to go along with that as well and then you do get a little bit of an added blue accenting on the front lip you're not going to be able to tell with the blue exterior obviously but that is going to be there otherwise but pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the leaf all right so now since we are around to the side of this one as far as those window surrounds go you're either going to get a chrome belt line molding or complete black window surrounds depending upon which configuration that you go with we obviously have all of the black window surrounds you do get a little bit of a floating roof line towards the back actually if i just show the back end of this car it almost looks like a miniature murano just from that roof line and the tail light going on to the back end of the leaf there because it kind of looks like a little murano it looks pretty good i like it chrome door handles can be found on the leaf as well when it comes to the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated for the SV trims and the SL trim level and you will get LED integrated turn signals within them if you were to go with the SV plus or SL plus trims then take a look down at the wheel configuration 16 inch wheels with covers coming with the S trim level only as far as the wheel design you're looking at right now we do have 16 inch aluminum alloys and that's going to come with the SV trim and the S plus trim that we have here today and then the other two being the SV plus and SL plus is going to get 17 inch machine finished aluminum alloy wheels but overall not not a bad looking side profile like i said it looks like a little mini murano more or less in my opinion but that about rounds out the side of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back all the way to the top you guys can see there is a body colored shark fin antenna just below that gloss black rear spoiler with an integrated brake light of course you do have that rear window wiper as well got some zero emission badging found on the right side there and just below that is where you're going to find the trim levels for each individual leaf so if you're ever on a nissan lot you're looking to see what trim level you're looking at that is where you're going to find it essentially there is a nice rear diffuser underneath of all of it as well and of course you do have some blue accents towards the bottom portion again you can't really tell because we have the blue exterior but of course there is no exhaust outlet on the leaf because it is not an internal combustion engine it is an electric vehicle so in this video we're going to skip that exhaust outlet because it does not exist and let's go ahead and make our way to the rear lift gate of this one now all right so now since we are around back of the leaf when it comes to opening that rear hatch it is a manual lift gate so simply just lift up under underneath there and that is going to open up for you once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 23.6 cubic feet behind that second row of course the rear seats do fold down if you were to fold them down that is going to bump that up to an even 30 cubic feet then there is a cargo cover that is going to come standard on the sl plus and it's going to be optional then on some of the other trims we don't have it there today but in that cargo area there is a little bit of cargo lighting and there is a grocery bag hook is what i'm going to call it but of course you can also store your charging cables on that grocery bag hook which is what you guys are kind of looking at right now but anyway let's go ahead now and make our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 33.5 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall this 
this is how much space I had back there. There is no rear center armrest with cup holders, no rear ventilation. And with a car this size, you probably don't need that anyways, but there is dual USB charging ports, which I definitely am a big fan of. So rear passengers can stay charged up back there, but then making our way to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the S, S, V, and S plus trims. And that is what we have today. Heated front seats coming with the S, V trims and the S, L. Eight-way power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar for the S, V plus and S, L plus leather seating coming then with the SL trim level only and actually the seats are pretty darn comfortable I gotta be honest even though they're manually adjustable cloth seats still plenty comfortable so I had no issues finding my perfect driving position I'll just put it that way there's a tilt and telescoping steering wheel it is then going to be heated for the SV trims and the SL and it's actually a flat bottom steering wheel surprisingly as well so I like the sporty design of that but then making our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here do you essentially have all your buttons on one side of the key the nissan logo lock unlock and uh if you hold that unlock button at the bottom there it's going to unlock it from when you're actually charging it which i think is super convenient to have on the key but essentially it is all keyless entry with a push button start for every trim level across the board so all i'm going to do here simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just below the climate control information there but once started up, when it comes to the gauge cluster, you will find a seven inch digital gauge cluster found on the left side. And then you got your traditional speedometer and analog form on the right, but you can adjust what is on those digital gauges through the steering wheel mounted controls. Essentially, it's going to give you how many miles you have left until you run out of range. It's gonna give you that not only in mileage form, but also in percentage form then as well and you do have the outside temperature with gear you're in the basics whether or not you have the e-pedal on or off so pretty much everything you could possibly want up there but then making our way to overall interior quality there is an overhead sunglass holder that is going to come standard for all trim levels across the board automatic climate control is going to come with all trim levels as well meaning you set a specific temperature and it is going to automatically hit that temperature for you there is an auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls if you were to go with the sv plus or sl plus trim levels overall as far as interior quality goes it's pretty much to the point i'll put it that way there's a lot of plastic included in the interior including just around the shifter also on the doors but overall it'll get the job done to keep in mind this is still the least expensive electric car out there just the front of the shifter you have a usb charging port phone charging port 12 volt power outlet and a little place i guess with a rubberized bottom to store your cell phone you do have the e-pedal just behind that as far as the shifter goes let me show you guys that real quick because it's kind of different to put it in reverse you slide it to the left and up to put it in drive you slide it to the left and down and then park is just you press the p button in in the middle so a little bit different than most other cars out there got a little bit of storage behind that dual cup holders and tiny tiny little bit of storage within the center armrest but i love the blue contrast stitching i'll say that on the center armrest and that's a very soft feel to it and that's a good thing because that's where a driver's going to be placing their elbow for the most part so overall like i said interior is pretty much to the point but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen eight inch color touchscreen display coming with all trim levels across the board bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that android auto apple carplay as well factory navigation system is going to come with the sv trim levels and the sl and overall was actually a very quick system i'll put it that way when you hit something on the touch screen it instantly changed there was no lag whatsoever so i was a big fan of that you can of course check out your radio information up there as well and by the way when it comes to the sound systems you will get four speakers for the s and s plus trims you will then get six speakers for the sv trim levels and then a seven speaker bose sound system for the sl so having said that i guess we have the four speaker sound system with the us here today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one it's actually not that bad for bass for a four speaker sound system but having said that it's four speakers it's pretty basic but Still decent bass for a four speaker sound system. I'll just put it that way. But last thing I want to mention on the infotainment screen is when you do put this thing in reverse, you will get a rear view camera and the vehicle is actually going to make this chiming kind of beeping sound as well. Since it's not an internal combustion engine, you don't have that engine noise to kind of warn other people that you're backing up. So that's why it makes that sound. And that is always, it's going to lead us 
into safety and so to start front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags then as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard across the board will include a forward collision warning system automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection intelligent lane intervention a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert rear parking sensors reverse automatic braking high beam assist and lane keep assist as well it's quite a bit that comes standard actually on all trims you gotta love that and then the sv trim levels and the sl is going to add to that adaptive cruise control then as well it's so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the leaf this is really an excellent price right now at least for electric vehicles so it's very possible you can get this one for nineteen thousand nine hundred dollars if you include with that the seventy five hundred dollar tax credit so if you were to owe the government seventy five hundred dollars and you take that into account, $19,900 is what you can get the S trim level for here. So that's pretty cool. Nice acceleration as well for the plus trim level like we had today. So I certainly didn't mind that. Not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway. Like I said, double powertrain warranty as well. I always like to mention that at Younger Nissan here in Frederick. So that's always a good thing for peace of mind. As far as room for improvement goes, the range is a little less than its competitors. So you got that, but the price is a little less than its competitors as well. So if you're looking for an inexpensive electric car, this is the most inexpensive electric car that you can get right now to date but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in any new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold